Aloha. I'd like to welcome you to a very sacred place on the island of Kauai. This is Wailua Nui Ahoano. We're above the Wailua River Valley at a temple complex known as Poliahu Heo. There are eight main islands in the chain of Hawaiian islands. They are Niiho and Kauai, Oahu, Molokai, Lanai, Maui, Kaho'olawe, and Hawaii Island. Our excursion today takes us to East Kauai. Poliahu is a snow goddess who resides on the island of Hawaii up in Mauna Kea where there's snow. But we do have a temple named for her here. The word heiau typically means temple, and some of these heiau were agricultural heiau, but today we're at a heiau dedicated to the god of war, and his name was Ku. Poliahu Heiau is located up Kuamo'o Road, which means the lizard back. There's certainly plenty of history and folklore about this area. And we are now looking out towards No No Mountain, known as the Sleeping Giant. The profile of No No Mountain is said to be the giant Aikanaka that fell asleep after a luau and never woke up. And across the street and to the left is Opaika'a Waterfall. Opaika'a means rolling shrimp. Place names often reveal qualities about the area that you're in. So we would know that this is an area that has an abundance of shrimp that comes down from the mountain rivers. Poliahu Heiau is just one heiau of many sacred areas, starting from the mouth of the Wailua River, going all the way up to Mount Waialeale, which is the highest mountain on Kauai at about 5,400 feet. It's one of the wettest spots on earth, averaging over 400 inches of rain annually. Mount Waialeale is hidden in the clouds today, but its highest peak is Kawaikini. The rock walls here stand approximately, at least at one time, were five feet high and five feet wide. The stones came from below the bluff here as people would stand in a line and transfer the stones from hand to hand. This heiau is said to have been made by the Menahune. The Menahune are known as mythical people, however, they were probably the very first inhabitants of these islands before other Polynesians arrived in the islands. They were said to be sprites or brownies or fairy type people that were very short in stature and stocky. And they would create these magnificent stone structures overnight. However, if they were disturbed, they would abandon the site altogether. So we have many places throughout the islands that the Menahune uh, built, such as a fish ponds and most amazingly, the ditch out in Waimea. So how is this heiau used in politics and religion? The season of war was known as Luakini season. And this is a Luakini heiau. That word is Luakini, meaning it is a sacrificial heiau. So as you're looking at it now, this is what it would look like during the beginning of the Luakini season. And all of the structures would have to be rebuilt for this new season. So a sacrifice was needed, three of them. And the first sacrifice would be an ulua fish or trevally. If you couldn't get a trevally fish or the ulua, eventually they went to human sacrifices. For human sacrifices, there was a class of people known as the kawa class. They were the outcast people. They were identified by tattoo markings on their face or forehead. Once a person for a human sacrifice was captured, they would put a fish hook in the person's mouth as if it were the ulua that had been caught from the ocean. 
The sacrifices were then used in the fence post holes of the structures that needed to be rebuilt for the start of the Luakini or war season. If a new Ali'i Nui or chief were using this area, they may rearrange the site so that it's bigger than the previous heiau. The main structures within the walls of the heiau were the Anu'u Tower. This is the oracle tower that the kahuna or priest would use. And then we have the lele. The lele is an altar in which offerings were set upon. And then we have the most important hale pahu. This stored the pahu drum, which was used in ceremonies for the political and religious aspects. The hale umu or imu, which is an underground oven. This is where the temple fires continuously burned and also where offerings were cooked for the gods. And again, Ku is our main god and he does have many names. Next is the Hale Mana. This is the area where the Ali'i Nui, the high chief, and the Kahuna Nui would do offerings and ceremonies and rituals required at this time. And they would keep sacred items here, other symbols of war. And last but not least, we have the Hale Ki'i, or a Hale Tiki, which is where the images of the gods were kept, and they were wrapped in a white kappa. Kappa is a type of clothing, if you will, that was the inner bark of the mulberry tree that was beaten and softened, and the best tapa was used to wrap the war images that were kept in the Hale Ki'i here. The most important image that would have been held in the Hale Ki'i would have been that of the war god Ku. There were various Ki'i of Ku, from carved statues to a feathered statue made of a material called Ie Ie, which is like a wicker. That's its foundation. And it is then covered with feathers of royal color and it has mother of pearl eyes with black onyx. Its teeth are made uh, from dog's teeth. An image of Ku was always brought during battles. It was typical of Hawaiians to give gods additional names such as Ku Ka'ili Moku, which means Ku, the snatcher of islands, or Ku Wahailo, which means Ku, the maggot mouth. And these are scary images such as the maggot mouthed Ku, but also the fact that when you go to war, it's because you're trying to gather land which has resources. One way to declare war with another chief was to cut down all of their coconut trees. As coconut trees were the most resourceful trees in Polynesia, and depending on what side of the island you lived on, you wa wanted to make sure that you had an abundance of resources. Water was not scarce on this island, but as you go further south, some of the islands are dry islands and have very few streams. One well-known story of a chief from Wailua that was going to battle with a chief from Waimea is that the chief from Wailua was said to have bananas with mana in them, which is spiritual power. So the chief of Waimea sent twins, a brother and a sister, here to Wailua to cut down all the banana trees. Unfortunately, they were caught by the priest of the Wailua chief, and he decided to turn them into stone and separate them. So one of them is in the river itself, and the other one is the top of 
one of the mountains and that's the story of the brother and sister that were turned to stone and separated throughout the duration of time. You'll notice on all corners of the hay yell and throughout the hay yell there is plenty of tea leaf or la'i and that's because it is said that that it will protect you from evil spirits. Now being that this area here is on the river banks we're above the riverbanks of the Wailua River. It's said that people see the ghosts called night marchers or kapo'e huaka'ipo. They see them here at night and at other places that are along the sides of riverbanks because that's the path that the ancient chiefs and their warriors would go or take into battle. And so it said sometimes at night, you can see these night marchers, these po'e huaka'i po, and if you do see them, you're supposed to strip down naked, get down on the ground, and don't look up. And the reason for removing all of your clothes is because it shows humility, especially if you're face down with your elemu or your your backside sticking up. That's humility. So this is what we would call a wahipana in Hawaii, a sacred place. Mahalo nui loa. Thank you very much for joining me, the Traveling Bee, on this beautiful excursion to Poliahu Heio. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and the information. And don't forget to share the aloha of the videos with friends and family. As we say in Hawaiian, until we meet again, ahui ho and aloha.